here we go. Hello everyone and welcome to Demon Interviews where we are going to be doing a Demon Media interview number 32. We are going to be discussing the Dragon Prince series. We're going to be talking about seasons one and two. Uh, today I'm your host, my name is Jen, I'm on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube at Jen Period Cosplays 45 and joining me today is our very lovely guest over here. Hi, I'm Mika Jen. Um, I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, um, TikTok and Instagram, I'm known as Mika Chen 215 On Facebook, I am Mika Chen Cosplay. Um, and I'm just really excited to be here because this has become one of my favorite shows of all time. I'm excited too. Uh, thank you for joining and humoring me on this little endeavor. So, but we are very, very excited to have you. Yeah. <laughs> you just have to say Dragon Prince and I come running. <laughs> just a line of jelly tarts and stuff. Fate doesn't get to them first. So, uh, but before we begin talking about the show, I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, which is a disclaimer. We do not claim uh, anything on the show. We are just fans of the show that want to review, give our thoughts and reflections and whatnot, so we're not sponsored by Netflix or anybody within the Dragon Prince uh, cast and crew. So, and also a little bit about the Dragon Prince, if this is your first time hearing about it. It is a Netflix series. Uh, the creators are I know I'm going to say your name wrong, and I'm so sorry, but it's Aaron has, he has, and Justin Richmond. Um, and not only that, our guest will be talking about the Dragon Prince Season 1, then I'll kind of give my thoughts, then I'll talk about Season 2, the guest will give their thoughts, and then we'll wrap up. So, that's pretty much it for housekeeping. So without further ado, our lovely guest is going to take it away with reviewing the Dragon Prince Season 1. So the first thing I want to say about Dragon Prince is that if you were fans of Avatar The Last Airbender, it is the similar creator, it is the same creators that make the Dragon Prince. So that if that if nothing else here convinces you you should watch this, that right there should I'm just saying. So Dragon Prince is a very interesting story. Um it's very medievally almost I would say medieval fantasy setting um with fantasy creatures elves humans dragons um magic um and these magical creatures actually is a big part of the show um you start off with the first episode and it kind of introduces the world kind of introduces magic this thing called dark magic how um magic was originally given to the humans by the unicorns and then uh all the unicorns got killed off this is something you only find out in the actual like book they did for the first actual season um because you get narrated all this um and then humans learn of something called dark magic which very very mm, about mm -hmm. um but basically they sacrifice magical creatures to power their spells and there's always a cost in the end um but this is kind of what you're like introduced into like the world building and you're introduced to the fact that there is a war going on between zadia and the human kingdoms because the humans came and killed the dragon king and his only son, the Dragon Prince. So, because of this, a group of elven assassins are sent to kill the human king, King Harold. 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 I can never say his name right. Harold. Um, who was involved in killing the Dragon King? So you see them prepare. They're preparing to kill the king and to kill the prince. And you're introduced to these um, these elven warriors. In particular, you're really introduced to Rayla, this young elven prodigy, like assassin prodigy, yeah. you know. <laughs> and how she, um, this is the first time she's gone on an assassination mission. She's like 
15, 16 years old. Um, and she went to hunt down this um, guard that came across them that was going to announce their presence. And she corners him, but she looked him in the eye and felt she couldn't do it. She couldn't because of how afraid he was, how she just couldn't bring herself to do it. So you see the human guard run off and he warns the human kingdom of their arrival. Meanwhile, while all this is going on, you get introduced to um, two young princes of this kingdom. Um, the uh, main male, one of the main male leads, the older one of the mm -hmm. two said, uh, Callum, sweet boy <laughs> Callum, um, who is like 14, 15, voiced by, if you need any more convincing, he's voiced by the same person who does Sokka from Avatar The Last Airbender. Sweet, great, amazing, we love. And you see him, he's an artist, he draws his beautiful drawings, and you see him, and then you see his, um, get introduced to the first in line king um, or prince Ezrin who is his younger brother and um, Ezrin's like 10 years old and you're just seeing this sibling like you can tell these brothers care for each other a lot like like this they are mm -hmm. perfect so sibling cute. icon but um this is, you know, this is just what you get, and that's just the first episode, basically, you know, because you got to start off slow, you got to do the little character development, like, mm. introduce the characters. Uh, so, it goes into next where um, the assassin, or the guard, notified the kingdom about the assassins coming, and um, the king is approached by his advisor slash high mage um, Viren, who is a dark mage, a powerful, terrifying dark mage, who's trying to convince him, um, trying to be like, we, we can take care of this, we can get it, we have to take care of them now though, because they are deadly if, we, if the full moon comes, because the elves that Rayla and her team are, are moon shadow elves, which they are most deadly on the full moon because they become basically invisible and you you can't basically find them at that point um so he try he sends the head of the guard which you find out is his oldest his son um soren and so soren goes and tries to find them using black magic to track them down well the elves um are led by ruin who is an adopted father figure to Rayla, and he manages to cover them up and make them invisible so they couldn't get found, and they, they're off their trail. But that made them realize Rayla lied to them about killing the guard, and all of them, they're just mm. basically not having it with her so she's basically you can tell there's there's a lot of strife there and runin at that point basically is like you're off this mission and she's like no no i have i told i bound myself to this mission and he's like yeah you'll be unbound when we finish the mission so they're continuing on with this mission even though it's like considered like a suicide mission at this point mm -hmm. um but Rayla doesn't take that sitting down. To her, it's about honor. It's about she she feels responsible for what she did. So she goes ahead of them to try to take care of this. And sneaking into the castle, she runs into Alan. Which is such a great, funny display in it all. Because his whole reaction is, you're, you're one of them with, with the ears. Oh, you don't like my ears, do you? <laughs> he's just like, why are you here? What? And she's like, I'm here to kill Prince Ezrin. And at that moment, Callum is like, well, crap, that's my, that's my brother. Oh, 
Well, so he straight up looks at her and goes, I'm Prince Sazarin. Mm-hmm. So in shoes a chase um, sequence of Callum trying to escape from Rayla, Rayla trying to hunt him down to kill him gimmicks until she finally corners him and at that time Ezrin who was found these secret passageways in the castle because all castles apparently have secret passageways if your castle does not have secret passageways are you truly royalty (laughs) so Ezrin like comes on the scene and it's just like Callum hey Callum and he's like not now and he's like it's like trying to talk to him trying to like tell him like I found something you need to see this and he's like seriously go away not now she's just like standing there listening to this exchange like what in the world what and so she pulls open the painting to find Ezra standing there and um she's like looking at Callum who's parading as Ezra and is like oh like he, like 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 Callum, I thought you were Ezra, and Ezra's like, no, that's that's me. You you lied to me, and it, and this whole exchange goes down. So then the two run off through the secret passageway, Callum and Ezra, with her chasing after them, and they're going through these secret tunnels, opening cases and stuff, and um, they ended up getting all the way down into Viren's secret lab. And they end up discovering that the Dragon Prince wasn't dead, but in fact, his egg was still protected and stolen at the bottom of the um, castle. Um, that's where they are temporarily. Meanwhile, while this is going on, um, Viren was trying to convince um, the king to um, use dark magic in order to avoid dying and the king's just not having it. He's like, black magic, dark magic got us into this. Mm-hmm. I'm done. Th- this, I never should have listened to you. No. And Viren keeps trying and he keeps trying to like, he tries to manipulate him to the point mm-hmm. Howard's like, I am your king. Mm-hmm. I've given you too much freedom. You listen to me. And I'm not doing this. Because in the end, he's, uh, he's like, this is the price we pay for what we did. And if I die here tonight, then that is what fate has determined for me for doing. That is the karma for what happened. Mm -hmm. And so he's being prepared to die. The the assassin crew is coming to attack. And the three young teens, preteen, are in the bottom of the castle and found the egg. So... Then it picks up where she, Rayla's like processing all this and she's just like, this, this changes everything. Like, there's no reason to continue on with this. The egg wasn't killed. We have to do something. We have to go take it back. This could stop a war. So they get the egg, but then they get stopped by Viren's other child, Claudia, who is a dark mage as well. So she tries to stop Rayla from taking the egg, but Ezra and Callan were like, no, what are you talking about? We need to take this back. Like, no. So she starts trying to attack Rayla. Um, Callan ends up taking away a primal stone from her, which is a source of magic in the world for someone to do magic without being made or like, like being a part of that primal source um and they end up escaping out with claudia chasing after them and during this time callum realizes or figures out how to do a spell and realizes that he's a mage i'm a mage (laughs) sorry we have to but you know as i said no one likes a loud mage Mm So they're they're they've ex- they out they escape Claudia and they Rayla's like look we have to get it to the roof I have to try to stop the assassins from doing this 
they're on their way is the only way we could potentially stop this. So they get her up to the rooftop and she runs into um, Runin. And she's like, we don't need to do this anymore. It wasn't like they said, the Dragon Prince is alive. And he's just like, what are you talking about? You shouldn't be here. And so she has the prince, the, the young princess reveal the egg, which even he's just like, he's alive. He's like, but this doesn't change anything. We are bound to kill them. So Rayla tells them to escape and takes on his mentor one-on-one -on -one in a fight as the full moon rises above um, Catalus, which is the kingdom they're in. So Ezrin and Callum escape out into the courtyard of the castle. Rayla is distracting Runin to the point he's like, you're just trying to distract me. And she's like, no, no, I, I'm trying really, really hard. <laughs> so she's like, I will deal with you afterwards and like takes off and she's trying to like stop him. And during this time, the assassins are coming to attack the king at the same time. So Callum gets Ezrin hiding in like hay with the egg and his glow toad bait. Um, and he goes off to try to warn the king of what is about to happen. At the same time, Rayla ends up heading down and meeting up with finding Ezrin because Bait gives him away because as Bait's name suggests, he's a glow toad, so he glows colors. Um, <laughs> he, is so, he is so grumpy too. Mm -hmm. And so um, Callum tries to warn his dad to stop this and out Viren for his role in all this, but Viren stops him. And at that time, the assassins came and attacked, and Callum ends up retreating and running back to the others. And they escape the city with the egg in tow, and as they escape, the assassins, you get the idea that all the assassins have perished, but Runin, who manages to fire off an arrow to the Dragon Queen the message that they have killed the king as he is captured and taken prisoner by Claudia and Viren in particular. Um, Rayla realizes the king is passed because one of her bounds that she has that binds her to that task of us to assassinate him has fallen off but she doesn't tell the others. So during this, um, they start their war to, uh, not war, but they start their journey to return the egg to um, Zadia, to the dragon prince. And they decide, um, Callum's like trying to learn magic and he's trying to learn how to do these things. And he's like, what was his thing? Like he's learning how to do like wind spell. He doesn't wind learn a wind spell. He learns, um, he's trying to learn this lightning spell. And you see them traveling and Callum was like, hey, I've seen something with all those primal source symbols on it. It was at our summer home, our, our winter mm -hmm. home. So why don't we stop there? And she's like, no, we're not gonna stop at a human like residence mm -hmm. with like, that's trouble. I mean, no. <laughs> um, and he's like, no, no, no. It's our winter home. No one's there right now. It's fine. Doesn't mention that they were supposed to be sent to the winter lounge mm -hmm. originally. So someone knew yeah. the princess were supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. So they get there and it's fine. Cool. Until, um, a guard of Catalus, a general, enters the scene, um, who turns out to be their aunt, General Maya, who is beautiful, wonderful, love her, and the beautiful representation she has is she's deaf. So they actively do sign language in this show and actively will sign language and they have someone translating for her. And it is just beautifully done. We love the representation. 
I can't, I uh, just, ah. So, he, um, she comes in, and, um, so Rayla's having to hide while the, the, the boys, the princess, are playing nice, trying to, um, give Rayla a way out. Mm -hmm. Well, while all this is going on, um, they currently have, um, King, ha um, the king being cremated, and Viren has decided to elect himself as what is called Lord Protector, basically regent at the time, since there is an empty throne, and there's not a prince. The princes are gone, supposedly killed, because he's writing his own narrative at this point, and this is all going on in the middle of all this. Meanwhile, uh, Rayla does unfortunately get captured and caught by Amaya and them, so she's actually held captive, which she's having to sneak her way out and, like, break through her restraints and sneak out, where she um, is rushing out with the princess because they got, um, they ended up meeting up with each other, and they go to escape, but they're cornered by um, General Amaya and her her troops, so they had to play off. Rayla was kidnapping the princess, mm -hmm. and if they tried anything, she would hurt them. And Callum sits here and tells General Maya that she's just a bloodthirsty monster who is not afraid to drink their blood. Wow. And, <laughs> and he finds out about it, or she finds out about it after a point. Um, so, because, um, she actually was like, what did you say? And, um, his translator, or Maya's translator is like, you're a bloodthirsty monster. And they escape onto a boat and get out of there. And Amaya sends a tracker after them to rescue the princess. Mm -hmm. So, they're fleeing, and during this, um... Amaya is leaving to go to, yeah, she um, leaves to go um, back to the kingdom to refer, to explain what has happened to the princess. Uh, meanwhile, they're going down river and you find out at this point, Rayla has seasickness. Well, a fear of water, a very bad fear of water, and gets kind of almost paralyzed. She is not okay with it at all. Um, I have a theory on why that is, which that'll be for a different segment. But um, I think it stemmed from her childhood because mm -hmm. you kind of get an idea that from the Blood Moon Huntress, the um, novel that explains Rayleigh's young childhood, it most likely came from that. Yeah. So. They just don't say it, but you get an idea. <laughs> so they're escaping and somehow um, the boat kind of gets, I, I want to say got knocked over or something and they get out of it, but Bate got left behind. So she's having to go back and rescue him, almost getting swallowed by a fish in the process before mm -hmm. rescuing and getting back to shore. and them deciding we're just gonna continue on foot at this point <laughs> yeah um meanwhile that happens um amaya comes back and she tells them no the um the princes are not dead Viren, no you cannot take over the throne the princes are alive and they need to be brought home so she does that and she refuses to let him have the throne which stops him from taking over for the time being and she leaves her um her like general her assistant her mm -hmm. translator there to make sure this doesn't happen while she goes back to the border border border, border. 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 thank you <laughs> um to zadia and the human kingdoms to protect there because knowing that they're probably going to zadia she yeah. is there to potentially stop them during that, Viren decides to imprison, um, names like Gwyn. Gren. Yeah. It's like Gren, Commander Gwyn, aka Cinnamon Roll Man. 
Oh my God. He's adorable. <laughs> He's like so happy, go lucky. Even <laughs> while in prison, this poor man is still just. Everything's great. <laughs> doing his best. I'm doing my best, guys. I'm doing my best. Um, <laughs> and um, while that's going on, um, Viren sends off his two, his two children to, um, sends them off to go, um, hunt down. He sends them on two separate missions. Um, tells Claudia to go to retrieve the dragon egg and rescue the princess. Um, Soren, he tells to go off to find them and to make sure an accident befalls King Ezrin. Which is, wow. Okay. Mm. So, we go back to our main, our main three trio, and um, Rayla ends up having to fight off the tracker that Amaya sends, and it is realized during this fight the binding she still has left for Ezrin because Ezrin wasn't killed is getting tighter, and it will keep getting tighter until it potentially cuts off her hand will become basically needs to be removed because it's just going to tighten tighten until it's like so she's starting to suffer pain because she has that there um so they're she's kind of rushing them she's kind of like being she's agitated she's in pain she's not brain not here what is brain pain is a thing so she's just pushing and pushing and pushing them to the point that Callum and her gets into an argument about this. And Ezrin ends up on top of ice and it breaks underneath him, dropping him and the dragon egg within it into the icy depths because they ended up making it to a snowy mountain region. So they quickly having to find him, pull it out, and get him to safety. And they realize something is wrong with the egg now, after it's been exposed to that cold temperature. They also discover that the reason this is happening, or that Rayla did all this, was that she is at risk of losing her hand at this point because she refuses to kill Azrin. So... But they're upset because she hid this from them. Which, like, mm. I'm sorry. Like, it's a little, it was a little mm, to me because, mm -hmm. I mean, she did nothing wrong hiding something like that. It's just, she didn't. She just met them. Like, come on, you they just mm. met a few days. <laughs> You but, gotta trust. That was like the big thing when I was like doing my rewatch was like trust was such a big factor in that whole endeavor. Yeah, and they don't, and like she's, she's definitely having problems trusting them after Callum straight up called her a bloodthirsty monster. Yeah, I would too though, so I can't yeah. really blame her. Like, <laughs> yeah, her feelings are hurt and she doesn't feel like she can trust him. And she feels like it's her own problem to deal with. The yeah. fact she's going to lose her hand. It's a lot. In such a short amount of time. Yeah. And she's mm -hmm. just like. She feels like it's her own burden to bear. She doesn't want to. She's not going to kill Cal. Or kill Ezrin just to not. Lose a hand. Like to her. Mm -hmm. A hand isn't worth. Killing a child. Mm -hmm. A child who is leaving their home and country in comfort to help deliver this egg for peace between Zadia mm -hmm. and the human nation, uh, human kingdoms. Like, mm -hmm. to her, it feels like she doesn't have a right almost to like complain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she does. <laughs> but yeah, poor baby. So they end up in a uh, human settlement because they're trying to figure out what they can do for the egg because something is wrong mm -hmm. and during this um we see a human Rayla for the first time <laughs> human Rayla uh 
where she just throws on the cape over her horns and ears and um, is impersonating being a human. So while the boys are trying to find someone, a vet or someone to take a look at the egg to help them out, Rayla found a human that has what is known as a, a sunfire blade, which burns as bright as the sun and as hot as the sun and can cut through anything. So she corners the human to try and borrow it to cut through um, the binding, um, but it doesn't work. So mm -hmm. she's still same place that she was before. And meanwhile, while that's going on, the um, the uh, the other two humans at that time sit here and um, figure out, well, there might be a healer that can heal the egg that is on this like creepy mountain um that saved like this um this this wolf um mm -hmm. pub that is a companion to this girl named ava so ava's gonna lead them to find them at this place um which is like the curse caldera caldera mm -hmm. um so yeah so they start going up there and this is where they end up as it gets higher and higher, um, things are about to get bad, theoretically. This is what the girl told them. It's like, yeah, it's the curse Kadera. Um, it's cursed for a reason. Nightmare, mm -hmm. Your worst nightmares will come true, things like that. Um, meanwhile, this is going on. Um, you go back to Catalus, and you see Viren trying to learn about this magic mirror he has and he's like trying to interrogate runa um to get you know this information to try to reveal what is this this is important or something because he stole this mirror from the um dragon king's lair when he stole the prince and brought it back so he's not ever been able to interpret what this mirror is so um runa doesn't answer anything so he ends up trapping his soul um, within a coin with dark magic meanwhile um, our heroes on top of the mountain are um, being attacked by this giant monster leech so they end up having to they have some heart to hearts with each other and work some things out before they finally get in unison to fight this creature. Only to find out the creature wasn't real. It was an illusion the whole time. So they they um they continue making their way up and it is during this time you discover that Ezrin has a unique ability of his own. He can talk to animals. And because he can talk to animals, he's able to discover the egg, like talk with the egg, because there's a creature inside. He also was the one to figure out that these creatures are all illusions. Mm -hmm. And Callum has to basically eat his words and do the jerk face dance for being a jerk. <laughs> yeah. So because of that, um, you know, they continue on. So at this point, our team is getting very, very desperate because the egg is not looking good. Um, it's starting to get dimmer and dimmer and they're getting concerned. And because they re really realized that it was an illusion, when they discovered the healer, it made sense why Ezra said that the healer wouldn't help be able to help them. Because the healer is another moonshadow elf named um, Lujane. Lujane? Um, she's an elven illusionist. And she made an illusion to make it seem like the wolf cub had all four legs again. But really only had three legs and continued to live. And be able to make it on three legs. And so she reveals the only way to save the egg was it needs to be in the heart of a storm in order to 
make him better. So as the egg is getting dimmer and dimmer, Callum makes the decision to break the primal source he had, because he had the um, sky primal source, breaking it, making an eye of the storm and happen to the egg, which not only healed it, but made the, dra made the baby dragon be born, hatched. So we get to see the dragon prince Asimonius, um, our Sim, as everyone yeah. calls him, because he's so cute. Um, he gets released and he is born. So we get our baby dragon prince, who is like the cutest little creature in the show. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> and with him being born, Zim had the power to be able to tear off that vine that was on Rayla's hand. And with that, she is no longer bound to that deed. So the, dra the baby dragon's fine. Um, and with um, dark magic, um, Claudia and Soren catch up to the gang. And that's where we end in season, uh, season one. Yay! Season one! Nice. Well, thank you uh, for all of that. So it was very nicely, concisely done. So, and it's really hard too because it's like, while you watch the series, it's like back and forth. It's like Viren and then Team Zim and over here and over there. It's like, so it's like better just to like group everybody all in one and stuff and then talk about it. <laughs> it thing the series is it can be hard at times volume four was kind of bad at this pacing rise yeah. because it jumps back between the story between multiple different characters that's going on in the world at the same time yeah. and season four felt a rush because of that mm -hmm. but here at the beginning it was good it's great it's, it's like the pacing's good my only um thing I would say is bad about this series only bad thing I have to say is um, if you remember Ruby with the animation the first three seasons mm -hmm. it is rough the first three seasons the story is so good it makes you be able to sit through it um, it's not as rough as Ruby was in his young days but it is a little rougher and you can see it in some of the scenes they tried to do like this almost 3d style fighting um like on the scene where rayla's fighting runa you mm -hmm. see it and it's it's kind of rough and you can see it in a few other things that's a little bit rough at doing it but this, mm -hmm. that's my only complaint yeah. about the dragon Prince. it gets rougher but we promise you the animation gets better so <laughs> gets season me. four season especially season, season five, five was very good <laughs> They did a very good job with that, so... Alrighty, I just have a couple little cool. notes with Season 1. Um, so, as uh, Miko Chan mentioned, there's uh, the Blood Moon Huntress, which is like a graphic novel with events that take place uh, before the series begins. There's also um, Reflections. Uh, you can find them on the Dragon Prince's official website. and. Um, a couple of those beforehand, at least at the time of recording and posting this video, we have uh, Patience, Ripples, The Queen's Mercy, The Queen's Soul, Blood Moon Huntress, Puzzle House, which just came out, and I just did a review on that, and uh, Rise Again. Those are some short stories you can read before watching season one, if you wish. Uh, we did mention one of the primal stones is Sky. There's six altogether, maybe a seventh, I'm going to leave that one up for a debate, but six, which is sky, moon, ocean, stars, sun, earth, and maybe the last one is dark magic. Yeah, it's kind of it rumored like kind of is seen as one, but yeah. it's a very touchy one. Mm -hmm. We don't, it's very frowned upon, especially if you were a creature from Zadia. Because it's your life force that's used to power this magic. Yeah. Maybe so. Maybe. Uh, some of my favorite lines from season one is uh, when Callum says, We do not wish to build a dirt man. Talking about like how his father said, like, Oh, you go to the Panther Lodge and you can make, instead of a snowman, like make a dirt man. And 
when General Maya comes over, he's just like, we don't want to build a dirt man. <laughs> he said they're going to run away from their problems and stuff, so. Um, I especially liked uh, Hera's line, King Hera's line of, like, a child is freer than a king. Like, they're not realizing, like, you have all this freedom where a king has responsibilities and burdens and secrets and stuff, so. Uh, there's a lot with that. Um, I've been I will say he was yeah. a very, very... He was a good father. He was. And what you really find out really early on is that Callum is his stepson. <laughs> Callum um, has a different father. His mother died at a very young age, so Ezra never met his mother. I think Callum was maybe like five when she passed and Ezrin was a newborn when that happened so the person he had the biggest connection with his mother was gone so he always felt he had to address his stepfather as king yeah and he like Ezrin was like you know why don't you call him dad he would really much so appreciate that and he's like it's complicated you don't understand so you definitely mm -hmm. get that feeling of like stepkids, half siblings, how they feel with a different family and trying to call someone else as their parental figure and getting that comfort, which yeah. Callum realized was too late mm -hmm. about that. Yeah, so they definitely do a good job like writing that out in like a kid friendly kind of way that makes it relatable. So that's yeah. this series is really good about touching issues. Mm -hmm. that are tougher to um, touch on, and they're not afraid of it. No, they're not. <laughs> Which is awesome. Uh, let me see. So, the other thing, too, is, and I, when I was doing my rewatch, I noticed this, too, like, why didn't Viren, like, destroy the egg? Like, he's always like, it's gonna grow up to be a powerful creature. It's like, well, why didn't you destroy it, like, now, while it's still in an egg form, instead of letting it hatch, so... It's always... I think, I think it's because source components for spells and stuff. A dragon, actual a dragon versus an egg, yeah. is going to be more powerful. So he was waiting for it to hatch, mm -hmm. so that he could harness its power to make him more powerful. Oh yeah, because that's towards end of a different season. <clears throat> yeah, so. Wanted to keep it makes that a good, tipped. like that's that's the feeling it gives me at least. Yeah. Because I mean, I you right. got an egg <laughs> versus you have a baby dragon. You can mm -hmm. have hair, scales, toenails, mm -hmm. like dark magicy things you could use. Oh my gosh. Oh, but we have baby, baby Zoom. He's okay. <laughs> He's okay. He's just a baby. He's a baby. He's the best. That's well, until another creature comes later on, then it's like, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, let's I, see. I still think Zim's the cutest. Yeah. Best dragon. Anyway, so that's all I have for notes for season one. Uh, Miko-chan, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Nah, short, yeah. sweet, to the point. Nice. Love it, love it. Alrighty, then we're gonna dive into season two, which is uh, entitled Sky. And this uh, season two came out February 15th, 2019. And the events uh, take place shortly after season one, about a week after they left uh, Catalus with uh, Zim. So, uh oh. My notes are doing things. If you see me looking off screen, I'm looking at my phone. How's all my notes? Because I can't remember everything. <laughs> You're not very good. But we are going to start with episode one, which is called A Secret and a Spark. So our first uh, scene starts at the breach, which is like a lava place. And we see General Maya arrives uh, to see that there's like a hole at the bottom. <clears throat> or the breach. Breach. So she goes and looks at it because she's kind of like, well, what's this doing here and stuff? She then gets ambushed by several Sunfire Elves. Um, and their leader, a female elf, appears and attacks, which Amaya also attacks and defends. Uh, but then somebody's sword is broken. I wrote her sword. I don't know whose sword is. Somebody's sword breaks. Amaya's. 
Is a Maya's one? Yeah, because uh, the Sunfire mm -hmm. one has one of those sun blades. Okay. So, poor Maya's sword's broken, so she manages to escape after giving a hefty kick to the elf. Then we go to, um... Oh, I actually see, like, bits and pieces of the first season, and Callum's kind of giving, like, a narration, like, an overview of everything that happened. Which Rayla cuts in and says, like, oh yeah, like, Rayla's daring, very daring, and stuff. And Callum's like, oh hey, how's it going? <laughs> it's like, you dorky boy. Um, so she asks him, like, you know, hey, what you doing? He's like, oh, I'm writing a letter to, to the king, to stepdad, and all this stuff. And you realize at the point, the boys still don't know what all has happened and everything, so... Uh, meanwhile, Ezrin and Ellis, that's the girl who has uh, the, the dog wolf creature with three legs, uh, they're playing with baby Zim, everything's peaceful, and uh, in the Kingdom of Catalus, Viren talks about dragons during a meeting. He says they have to prepare to fight and to call a summit of the pen Pentarchy. Uh, Ujain, who's the moon shadow elf, uh, illusionist calls the other for a meal, which is just an illusion of grubs and bugs. Yeah. So Rayla arrives, and even though she is excited about having two hands, she tells them all they need to go. <laughs> Rayla, I feel like, is just one of those people, like, you know, you set a destination, she's just like, let's hurry up and go, and everybody else is like, well, we want to stop here and go there and stuff, and she's like, no, we have somewhere to be, so any fan art of that. <laughs> Yeah, they're just sightseeing crew, and she's just like, guys, we've got a job to do. It's not now. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, Ezrin kind of wants to stay a while because he wants to teach Zim how to fly. Callum wants to learn more magic, so they decide to stay for one extra day, uh, which Rayla decides to keep guard. Callum and Lujane uh, go off into like a, the gardens, and they find the moon hedge. <laughs> Um, which was destroyed when Zadia was divided into two, so that way humans couldn't find it and use it for their own gain. Uh, so Lu Jane takes it upon herself to watch over everything, saying that if the moon hedge was discovered, she wouldn't exactly kill anyone, but she would use some pretty crazy illusions to drive those, uh, trying to get in pretty, pretty mad, so... Uh, Ezrin teaches him to fly, but he's pretty hesitant, Zim's just... Little baby doesn't want to fly. Viren goes back to the chamber uh, where the fight took place that night that King Harrow fell. Uh, and then in one of the drawers, he sees a royal seal and takes it. So like something that you would use to like stamp letters that would show like this, this is a message from the king. Pretty high up there. Rayla talks about how she feels something bad is out there upon further investigation. Engation, she sees an illusion spider, and she is not impressed. Ezrin uses Fifi, who is um, Lujane's uh, moon phoenix. So he's like, all right, Fifi knows how to fly, so you can teach them how to fly. <laughs> it's like, uh... Lujane tells Callum the moon is strong when it is full, uh, which Callum interrupts her, and she's like, please don't interrupt. It's like, I feel like I'm Lujane sometimes. Just like, don't interrupt me, yeah. Uh, so then she shows him the moon nexus. Oops. My alarm's going off. So she goes <laughs> and shows him the moon hedge, kind of like a stone place, and then the moon nexus is like a, like a lake, like a mirror lake type of thing. So, uh, Lujane tells him humans can't do magic, that he was able to cast the spell due to the primal stone, um, <laughs> which is now broken, so... Callum's like, well, other humans can use magic, but Lujane says it's an atrocity talking about dark magic. Callum doubts if he can do, do like, dark magic. He goes back and speaks with Ezrin about how their days were, with Ezrin saying that he believes in himself, that Zim will be able to fly with his help, and Callum takes this to heart and says that he is not giving up yet either. Meanwhile, back at Catalus, we see the Crow Master for the first time. And Viren says he has mail to deliver, which the Crow Master notices the King's seal. And then it cuts back. I think this is the only time I do this, but yeah. It cuts back to Callum confronting Lujane about how he failed at swordsmanship, 
with magic, he felt more like himself. Uh, we learned that all creatures in Sadia are born with primal sources inside them, and that um, through this there is the Arcanum. And Arcanum is the meaning or secret of the primal source. Uh, and then a spark, and then one feels the primal source. So Callum is eager to learn about the moon Arcanum, since he's already figured out Sky, or still figuring out Sky, and how it is a and Lujane tells him it's all about appearance versus reality. Uh, Callum retires for the night, and he uses the, the cube on Zim and Bait, realizing <clears throat> they had a primal source in each of them. Zim is, of course, sky. Bait is actually sun. I thought Bait would be earth, but he's either sun or water. I can't remember. It'll look like sun. May have to look at that later on. Put an edit. Make Don't edit, but... Glowing? Yeah. Maybe. If not, I'll put it in the comments below, so. Uh, so the boys retire for the night. Rayla decides to go for a walk, and she grows sleepy at the sound of an instrument. She grabs a blue rose and falls to the ground. Claudia appears, playing the instrument, and Soren is beside her. Claudia tells Soren to do it, and he reaches for his sword. Then we move on to episode two, Half Moon Lies. So Rayla is sleeping, um, with Soren above her about to swing his sword. Soren says he can't do it, feels that it's unfair to attack someone who is sleeping. Claudia asks if, if she should wake her up, and Soren says yes. However, Rayla wakes up herself, and, um, and the two are confused, but she says that, oh, I used this lovely rose here. The rose is thorn to stay awake, like poking herself awake so that way she wouldn't fall asleep with the music. Soren puts on a sword show, much to Rayla's sh chagrin. The two then battle, and while Soren's sword is stuck to a tree, he kicks Rayla down. Soren goes for the uh, sweep the leg motion, which annoys Soren because he's like, that isn't a thing in sword fighting. However, she manages to knock him down. Claudia calls out for Soren, and with Rayla distracted, he pushes her down and Rayla falls into some mud. Claudia covers her two swords and chants a spell, which causes the blades to make them hot. Rayla drops them, and Soren asks if she has any last words. Rayla asks if hot mud counts as a word, and kicks some mud in his face. Just as things are heating up, <laughs> Callum steps in, saying to stop fighting, that Soren and Claudia are his friends. And Rayla is also his new friend and a good elf. And I love little Rayla's like, what do you mean, a good elf? It's like, oh gosh. But Callum's able to pacify them all by saying that if they're still not happy with one another in the morning, they could just kill each other off and, and all that stuff. So Callum leads Soren and Claudia to their sleeping quarters, quarters and Rayla picks up her weapons. Back at the castle, Gren tries to talk to Viren, who ignores him. Viren attempts to look at the mirror. He applies like an anti-illusion truth to be able to see what is inside the mirror, but it doesn't work. Frustrated, he throws stuff around and he snuffs out like the candle flame and everything, causing the mirror to light up with the strange room on the inside. So it only works, the mirror only works in like complete darkness. You can't have like a candle or a lantern or anything, it's only complete darkness. <laughs> Uh, Callum and Ezrin talk about how Claudia found him. Uh, the two come up with the plan. Oh wait, so Soren and Claudia come up with the plan to get the princess to come home. And Soren says that they need to butter them up. And Claudia does the nose thing. Anybody knows? Knows the nose. <clears throat> uh, she then makes pancakes, which are real food, not illusions. Ezrin then shows them the egg, but it's now hatched into baby Zim, and Claudia is in love, because of course, who wouldn't be in love with baby Zim? But Rayla steps in, like, you can look, but you can't touch. Soren says they need to come home because the king misses them, and the boys get excited, but Rayla's like, um, dude, no. <laughs> dude, no. Later, Soren thinks Rayla is in, is into her, into him, but Claudia says it's because Rayla is onto them, and that they lied to Ezrin and Callum and how wrong it all was. Claudia and Callum go for a walk and talk about the Primal Stone, Rayla being a friend, and Callum gives her a tour of the place. Soren decides to create something that would look like an accident for Ezrin, so his task 
is to um, <clears throat> make it look like you know the prince prince had died and everything. So his father can be king, and Claudia's supposed to retrieve the egg, but now it's a dragon. So it's a lot of little side stories going on. Claudia meets LeJane, who is not impressed by her. Claudia and Calum talk about dark magic, how humans can take creatures with primal magic or primal source inside, squeeze it out of them to cast a spell. And Calum says he wants to do primal magic, not dark magic. Claudia says about how they were born with nothing and how dark magic helps. Meanwhile, Soren makes a zipline for Ezrin and Zim. Calum shows her the moon hedge, <clears throat> and they set a date to go back to the moon nexus later that night. Uh, Soren's current plans are interrupted by Rayla, who says he should go next on the zipline, and he goes to double check the peg. Rayla tells Callum they cannot trust the two of them, and she talks about the peg and everything. Callum says they don't have. <clears throat> Callum says he and her don't have the trust that he has with Soren and Claudia because he's known them for years. Uh, Rayla then decides to talk with Lujane and how she needs a friend to trust him. Lujane advises by using the half moon as an illustration and how even though half is not there, there are parts of themselves that are hidden. Real trust is about accepting the dark parts we don't even know, which Rayla is confused about as relation as she says relationships need the full truth. Claudia and Callum go on a date, which seems nice and romantic if you are a it's a Claudium shipper. Not here. <laughs> Not here. <clears throat> and right before they kiss, Claudia stops him. <clears throat> Rayla waits for Callum, who, who then says she needs to talk to him, but seeing his tear-stained face, she realizes he learned the truth. Hydrate. Oh, drink your water. I'm just that <clears throat> tea, right? I know. I got a lovely Earl Grey. Yeah, Earl Grey here. That's the tea moment here, so... Oh, we both have ruby cups. Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Multiple fandoms here, maybe? Nice. Well, it's funny because when I first started watching The Dragon Prince, I was kind of getting some ruby vibes, so. See ya. <clears throat> Alrighty, episode three Smoke and Mirrors. <clears throat> so, back at Catalus, Spiran stares at the room within the mirror. He sees a mysterious figure in a cloak arrive inside the room, but it exits. Later, the figure appears, and it seems he senses a stare and approaches the mirror, but on the other side, it's like another mirror. This is going to get confusing. However, the elf turns off the lights and is able to see Viren on the other side of the mirror. Um, so yeah, so, you know, it's a mirror on the elf side. We'll learn his name here in a minute. Uh, but then when the elf takes out the light in his room, you can see who's on the other side, which of course is Varen. And my theory is the reason why the elf's room was so well lit was because he couldn't be able to see the dragons. The dragons could see him if they turn off the lights in their thing. <laughs> it sounded weird. If they turn off, uh, if they didn't have any light and stuff, so. Okay, complete darkness. Alrighty, so it's still the same night as uh, Claudia and Callum had their date. Rayla tries to apo apologize, and Callum is frustrated with the whole situation, especially since he now has to tell Ezrin. <laughs> Claudia arrives back at the bunk, and Soren thinks that Callum hurt Claudia, but she denies it, saying, like, no, no, it's because I finally told him the truth. <clears throat> uh, thankfully, Ezrin is sleeping, so Callum waits until the next day to talk to him. Callum talks to Ezrin, who thinks this is about a sandwich talk, like he said that he would give him back in like season one, which Callum says it is not, and Callum says he has seen Ezrin grow up and how proud of him he was. Ezrin says he knows, but instead about it being about their father's passing, it's about teaching Zim to fly, and Ezrin says that he is supposed, supposed, Zim is supposed to learn how to fly from the King of Dragons. Callum says, that Zim has Ezrin, Rayla, and Bait. Ezrin brings up that his father uh, brings up that his father would know what to do and how he misses him. Calum starts crying and says he misses him too. Calum goes back to Rayla and says he couldn't tell Ezrin what happened. Rayla and Calum talk about <clears throat> uh, leaving to go to Zadia. Claudia says she needs to give something to Callum in private, and it is the scroll that the king had given to him in the previous season. 
and he puts it away. Rayla and Callum talk about how Soren and Claudia want to come with them, and Rayla says, no way. <laughs> he ain't coming with us. Rayla goes back to talk with Lujane, banging on the moon sculpture. She tries to offer the same advice, but Rayla says she already heard the speech. Lujane is out of options, but Rayla says there is something she can help in another way. Uh, <clears throat> Lujane goes to say her goodbyes, and they all head out. Rayla stops to go find some berries, as they have a long trip and they'll need some food, and Soren follows behind her, ready to attack her. But of course, she anticipates this, um, <clears throat> and then of course we get the classic Rayla line that I absolutely love, which is, uh, you don't speak sarcasm very well, do ya? Uh, Claudia chants a spell, and her snakes are released to reveal chains, and she goes to capture Zim. Soren and Rayla continue to fight, and Claudia begs Calum, Calum for him to say something. Claudia realizes something is wrong, and she realizes it was a trick. Soren is a bit confused, and Rayla goes, A trick? No way! Which Soren picks up as sarcasm. He's learning. Let's go! Rayla calls for Ellis, and when she removes the collar uh, from Ava's neck, it shows that the two princes were actually illusions. Soren asks where the real princess and Callum and Ezrin fly on Fifi, stopping to pick up Rayla. Claudia casts a spell, trying to bring Fifi in, but <clears throat> different chains try to stop her, and Corvus appears, the one that had been tracking down the princes, and Soren knocks him out with a rock. The th However, the three are able to get away on Fifi, and we also see Ellis one last time saying, don't forget about me, don't, don't, don't. Callum is sad that Rayla was right, um, Soren and Claudia take Corvus as prisoner. They think they have the dragon, but it's actually Mal's, which means that Zim, Bait, Ezrin, Callum, and Rayla fly on Fifi to Zadia. So, it's a pretty action-packed episode. <laughs> Alrighty, episode four, Voyage of the Ruthless. Team Zim, so that's why I'm going to be referring to them uh, right now, so everybody that I listed off few seconds ago. It's Team Zim. Team Zim. So they're now flying where Callum is trying to uh, meditate to connect to the Arcanum. But then they start losing altitude because Fifi can only travel at night because she uses the moon uh, as her power source. So uh, they eventually send Fifi back to La Jane and then um, <clears throat> they continue on foot. Uh, let's see. Actually, they don't travel by foot. They travel by boat again, because they have a large amount of water to cover. So they have to go into a town, um, which means that we get human Rayla again. Yay! And not only that, it's Zim's first time being human Rayla. So <laughs> we get a lovely human. Yay! <laughs> uh, let's see. So they decided to have uh, Rayla stay with Zim and Bait, and then Ezrin and Callum go and find a captain with a boat or a ship. They eventually come back saying that they found someone, and she's like, oh, like, wonder who it's gonna be, and we meet Captain Velod Velodis, uh, and Berto, his parrot. He is Captain of the Ruthless, but not only that, he is blind in both eyes, so he has, like, double eye eye patches over each eye, so he can't even see that Rayla's an elf and not a human, so. Um, so Velati says that there's actually a storm coming in, but the gang is excited, um, they're getting ready to leave and stuff, so. <clears throat> but Callum gets excited learning about the storm, because he figures, hey, like, maybe I can try sky magic and stuff like that, so. <clears throat> but Rayla's like, I don't want anything to do with the storm, I just want to get safely to the other side. Cal Callum and Velades talk about the wind and sails as Callum figures out how it applies to connect with the Arcanum. The storm starts and Callum takes a chance to learn. Rayla is a little bit seasick um, and they all head to a nearby island to kind of wait out the storm. While they wait, Callum thinks he needs to go into the storm to unlock the sky Arcanum. He leaves with Zim and it doesn't seem to be working at first. He decides to go up higher. Uh, so Callum wants to do magic even though there's nothing inside of him, yet he goes up to a place with like a windmill 
uh, that has a lightning rod. Callum is a bit fearful, but knowing he can't risk his life to do magic. But at that moment, Zim is hit with a lightning bolt. So he's like, I can't do it. And then Zim's just like, electric. Uh, Callum heads back down to tell them what happened to Zim. Uh, but actually, Zim is actually okay. He's quite, quite okay. So of course, he's a storm dragon. So he, he just absorbs it all up and gives his little zappy kisses. <laughs> Callum realized he was rushing, rushing it and he didn't have the guts to do it. Rila says uh, that it was good that he finally understands hugging him, but she hugs her back. And I think that's the first time they ever hug, too. So, <laughs> real and shipper, yay! Alright, <clears throat> so we actually get a little bit more about what is going on at the breach, where General Maya is surveying the lands uh, to see if, like, if there's any elves nearby. They get a signal that the outpost is secure. Later on, Amaya and the others are investigating an area, where Amaya senses something's off. However, a soldier appears apologizing for being late on, on the queue. As the others turn away, Amaya notices, notices him signing, and she realizes it was an elf and that they were ambushed. <clears throat> uh, there is an attack, but Amaya and her team escape. Viren tries to communicate to the figure through the mirror, <clears throat> uh, who notices the staff and leaves. The figure comes back and has a bunch of items with him. Viren realizes he needs to find the same items. Uh, Viren collects these items <clears throat> and the figure guides him to sew on a cloth, a type of unknown rune. He is able to use uh, the geode inside to make a drink, then to take the dagger and cut a small bit of blood, but Viren backs out leaving the area. Viren talks to the crow master and he has four messages. A, the other kingdoms have agreed to the meeting. Viren goes back to the figure and covers up the mirror. Alright, <clears throat> uh, I do want to say the next two episodes, you're going to be getting some backstory and lore uh, about events that happened before the seasons, but they're all going to tie in. So let's get ready for episode 5, Breaking the Seal. Uh, so Viren arrives at a building where the meeting will be held. We meet Queen Anya of Durin at this point, and we also get the ever-so-famous crown comment about you're a king, or sort of kind of king with no crown and stuff, but I'm a queen with a crown, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> We're all here, let's talk. Viren's- I love her yes. so much. Oh, I oh, love this 10-year-old with all my heart, and yes. I will throw down anyone who tries to hurt her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she's the youngest, too, so. Alrighty. Uh, Viren starts the meeting. He shows a map and, you know, recounts the story of King Harrow's fall. He asks the kingdoms to join him in the fight, but Queen Anaya is still undecided. Viren tells her the story about nine years ago, when his friend, uh, at the time Prince Harrow, and how he became king. Uh, <coughs> There was, uh, like, a moment where King Harrow and Viren had their portrait painted together. We have King Harrow and Sarai have a conversation about a dream with Lady Justice, where you have baby Ezrin stealing jelly tarts from under their noses. Uh, days go by as King Harrow does his duties, and then two guests appear, which happens to be Queen Anya's parents. <coughs> They need help with food, it's winter time and they don't have enough food for their people, and King Harrow agrees to help, but Viren says they cannot do that because there is not enough food to go around for both kingdoms. King Harrow then decides to share in the suffering. Viren then helps with his research and shows him a rare relic about a magma titan. If they get the heart of the titan, in areas similar to where the breach is, Viren could warm up the lands enough to plant crops. However, King Harrow has to convince one particular person, his wife, Queen Sarai, which they talk about while practicing their sword fighting. Later on, they go to the border and the breach, <clears throat> where they go over the plan. We see Amaya sign something, which makes Sarai laugh. <clears throat> so it seems like folks are in good spirits, so they go into the land um, in Zadia, which they're not really supposed to do. And Viren uses like a tracking spell to look for the Titan. 
they eventually find the Titan, but they find out that it is dead. Um, but they're still not going to give up because they've made it this far, so they continue their plan. They manage to open up the Titan, who is actually still alive, and quite furious about being woken up so. So it's kind of where the story ends for now. Uh, meanwhile, Teen Zim, <clears throat> they're still on the seas sailing, probably. Rail is not having it that much, but Ezrin is quite bored and takes a nap with Sin. They do like synchronized sleeping. It's so cute. Which leaves poor Bait out. Um, so Bait goes and finds Callum, who has the scroll from the king, and he's like, you know, do I open it or not? Which he decides to do so. So, quick hydrate break. I do want to, like, jump in here and throw in jump that, in. uh, you find out during that um, flashback sequence of the recounting that General Amaya and Sayori, Sy uh, they are twins. They are oh, yeah. sisters. They are twins. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> I love both of them so, so much. Uh, Alrighty. <clears throat> can make it. I can do this. <laughs> This next one's a bit of a doozy, but we're still continuing the backstory. This is episode 6, Heart of a Titan. Uh, <clears throat> we're actually going to start with Team Zim. So Callum finally opens up the letter. And of course, it's a message from King Harrow about his relationship with Callum and about his impending death. He also has a lie, a wish, and a secret that he wishes to share with him. The great lie is of history, about the rise and fall of empires, that it should be conducted as a narrative of love. The wish is that he wishes both of his sons to be free, rejecting the chain, chains of history. Excuse me, sorry. And lastly, a secret where it is at the Panther Lodge and the cube is mentioned, which Callum fortunately had in his bag, so thankfully they didn't have to go back to the Panther Lodge. Uh, King Harrow says that the cube belonged to a elf named Erevos and is able to connect to the six primal sources and be able to unlock something of great power in Zadia. The letter ends with a bonus secret that Bait secretly loves tummy rubs, which Callum gives to, to dear Bait. <laughs> Rayla talks to Vladis about being an assassin. Um, so he kind of asks her, like, you know, hey, like, what's your dream? Like, what do you aspire to be? And she's not sure what her dream is. And every single time I see that scene, I just think of, like, you know, cue that one Tangle song. Like, you know, I have a dream, I have a dream. Just put Rayla in the middle of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically how it goes. Uh, Vladis tells her a metaphor about a river, how it doesn't, con how, you know, you don't control where the river goes, but that, you know, you can control yourself, she can control herself and what she believes in, and then the river will take her where she is meant to be. Vladi also shares another secret about waterproof socks and how great they are, but Rila is unimpressed. <clears throat> Callum comes back up to the dock and gives Ezrin a hug. They all make it to land, but they see a large shadow in the clouds. Meanwhile, Viren is still speaking with the council. Queen Anya is glad to hear the story from someone who was there, as Viren understands it is a story about sacrifice and love. So we go back into our flashback story. So by now, the Magma Titan has rise and shined, and he starts attacking. So uh, the crew, they fire large arrows in between the cracks to slow it down, but that doesn't work. General Maya falls off her horse <laughs> at this point, but they're able to fire an arrow where uh, there's like a crack in the where they cracked into the Titan. They push the arrow contraption thingy. I don't know what it's called. Like a cart. Cart. There we go. They push the cart over the edge, um, which the Titan is not happy about. Amaya gives Sar Sarai a boost, and she goes and throws her spear into the Titan's center. The Titan then collapses, and the heart is revealed. Viren says that they will be able to save everyone, and we get a kiss from the two queens that had come for the help and stuff. So yes, we love representation. Amaya is badly hurt, and Surat goes to her. Viren convinces Hera to leave the wounded behind. A sunrise is about to happen, and the King of Dragons will then patrol the skies. 
Amaya makes her comment about not needing to whisper, and Soraya says she can stay with her to rest. Viren says, let's hurry it up. The Hera says, no, they leave no one behind. And they were <clears throat> they were all moving slowly, at least for Viren, but they made it to the entrance, but that is when the King of Dragons, who is alive during this time, uh, Av Avazandam appears. The queens go to fight slash distract him as the others try to get the wounded back to safety back into the human kingdom. Viren decides to help by using a primal stone, using a spell to freeze the dragon, and he uses lightning to break free. But he uses lightning to break free and crushes the queens with his tail. Sarai goes to Viren, as without him they would not be able to do the spell that they need to help the two kingdoms. Um, but before she goes and helps him, she does tell King Harrow her last words to him was, I will see you on the other side. Try not to cry. <laughs> Uh, Sarai manages to save Viren, but it cost, cost her life. Viren is unable to use, or Vi excuse me, Viren is able to use the spell, so it wasn't all for nothing. He's able to use the spell, they're able to warm up the lands, they're able to plant crops, despite it being cold, winterish, and everybody is uh, saved, that there's been a lot of lives uh, saved. Yet Harrow is still heartbroken about what happened, about losing Sarai, and now he has to tell Callum. So we don't get to see that, but something that um, when I was rewatching, I did notice when he goes to talk to, to little Callum, he doesn't wear his crown. He took off his crown during that part, and I was just like, well, it just, it just feels like so much. Do you, he, I feel like that is something he probably did to approach him as not a king, mm -hmm. but as his father. Mm -hmm. so and that was something like... So cute. <laughs> if, if I also remember correctly, when um, Sarai goes and saves Viren, doesn't mm -hmm. he take Sarai's last breath and seal it? Oh, does he? Yeah, I think he does. Oh my gosh. Because they needed yeah. that. Mm -hmm. That's for later, what happens like, with it. Yeah. Oh gosh, that'd be creepy if he did, instead of just letting her die peacefully. It's like, oh, I could use this. It's like, oh, why, dude? There's a reason. I see. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I will throw it in when, um, <laughs> when it gets to that part. Yep. Okay, so wrapping up episode six, we have after Viren tells the story, uh, Queen Anna, excuse me, it's Queen Amaya, she is a queen in her own right, uh, Queen Anya is emotional about not having having known her mothers, knowing that they would be proud of her and love her for who she is. Viren says her mothers would join the fight um, if, if, you know, they were still here and in her position. Uh, yet Queen, Queen Anya says that she will not join the fight. Viren has a meltdown about how they all were cowards. Everybody in, in the council was cowards. So it's like, dude, chill. <laughs> Take a chill pill. <clears throat> Alrighty, episode 7, Fire and Fury. So, so it starts with Callum asking Bait about the cube, and Rayla tells him a little bit about how she got her moon, moon shadow powers. There's also a Sailor Moon reference in there. She's like, <laughs> so there's, there's some references in this show. Lots of good ones. Uh, Callum wonders at how, how they will be able to wander into Zadia, for one does not simply walk into Zadia. That's Lord of the Rings. And Rayla says that there is a moonstone path they can use, but first they all need some rest. <clears throat> uh, Soren and Claudia manage to catch up to this area at this point, but instead of uh, where they're at, they're, they make it to a small town. The townspeople are not focused on their arrival, but in a, about a dragon that's flying around in the sky. Soren takes command and they fire up the ballista, Corvus says the dragon is just being intimidating and not attacking, which Soren says they will show the dragon that humans cannot be intimidated. Soren attacks the dragon, but it flies away. Soren thinks they scared it off, but it comes back to attack. Surprise! Team Zim <clears throat> is not too far away, and Rayla recognizes the familiar sound, and they all go to see what happens. 
Soren leads the command of the ballistas, but the dragon is nimble and quick. Soren frees Corvus, who tells them to not get killed. Soren says he probably did mess up, but Claudia has something to help with the ballista so that way it doesn't miss its target. The arrow doesn't miss the target. She does so, and the arrow hits the dragon, and the dragon flies to the forest right past Team Zim, who then go to look for the dragon. Ezrin talks to the dragon, kind of telepathically. English. <laughs> Not today. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Um, and they're able to help remove the arrow. Yet they sense others approaching, and Rayla wants to defend the dragon. But Callum and Ezrin help get her away, but they notice that Claudia and Soren are within, within their ranks. Uh, and they manage to escape back. Claudia says how it was Soren's dream to bring down a dragon. <clears throat> and that it was actually her that was able to, to bring it down. Soren tells the other to secure the dragon, but then he's like, well, how are we going to move it all into one go? Which Claudia suggests that they uh, move the dragon in pieces. Team Zim go back to the cave, and Zim and Bait are fine. Rayla feels that she should be able to do more to help protect the dragon. Rayla says that someone told her about a cycle that never ends, something that Callum told her about. Callum agrees, <clears throat> uh, even though he can't do anything, but Rayla says she is going back to help the dragon. When she gets there, she manages to start freeing the dragon, but Soren sees her. The two fight, especially as it starts to rain. Callum sees a past picture of young Claudia holding her spell book. So then he leaves the cave, so Ezrin is at the cave with Zim and Bait. Everybody is over by the dragon. <clears throat> uh, Callum arrives, and Claudia arrives, and he is holding uh, her spell book and like a worm type of creature. Uh, Claudia is a little bit concerned about what he's about to do, and that... Uh, he says that he is about to do her kind of magic. Callum uses dark magic for the first time, and he's able to break the chains around the dragon into snakes, which then frees the dragon. Uh, the dragon then attacks. Um, Soren slashes at one of the horns, uh, cutting it off, which the dragon did not like, and Soren ends up getting smacked into a giant rock. A large thud is heard. Meanwhile, uh, Ezrin is playing hide-and-seek, and they lose Zim, who found his way back to the dragon, so this is not a very big area or something. Uh, but the dragon, upon seeing Zim, becomes quite startled, recognizing something, and then flies away. Claudia says that Zim is coming with her, but when Soren calls out for help, she goes to help him. Rayla hurries a hurt Callum back to the cave, uh, <clears throat> with Ezrin and Zim following along. Meanwhile, back in Catalus, Viren returns from the meeting to find an infuriated uh, Apelia. Viren says that the meeting was all for nothing. He goes back to the chamber where Gren is waiting for him. Viren asks him why can he remain so cheery in his state, which Gren says, why well, see myself as chained down when I can be chained up? Maybe a double thumbs up, because he is such a seminal. Love him. Viren sighs and heads back to the room goes back to the magic mirror and takes off the cover. The magic mirror releases a bug from its mouth and arrives in Viren's pot. He picks it up as it crawls to its ear and the voice on the other side can speak through it. Because magic. That's why. Okay, almost there. Episode 8, The Book of Destiny. So, right after the fights with everything and the dragon flies off, Rayla tries to hurry them up, but Ezrin says that they still need to rest. Meanwhile, Claudia, Claudia tries to tend to a hurt Soren, realizing he is paralyzed. He is seen by a doctor, but it is not good news, and as he will not be able to walk again. Claudia tries to cheer him up, but he knows. And now he can't do what Dad wanted him to do, which was to kill the princess. 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 Yes. And now Dad can't be mad at him. <clears throat> uh, ten minutes later, Soren decides he wants to be a poet and, uh, and do like a club thing where he would recite his poems, but they're not very good. Claudia goes through the medicine and is thrown out of the hospital. She wanders around town saying her calming mantra, there is no synonym for cinnamon. 
She then meets King Ezrin, who's riding a panther, and says he wants to talk to her. Uh, so let's see. <laughs> Team Zim helps Callum, uh, and right at that point, Corvus appears. Right as he and Rayla are about to fight, he sees Ezrin and stops. He lays down his weapon, saying that uh, Amaya sent him. Ali. Sorry if you're scratching my cats at the door. Uh, he says he's there to serve the king, and in Ezrin's eyes, you can see he finally recognizes what happened. So this is how he finds out that his father passed. Uh, and that realizing that Rayla also knew uh, before him because of the risk finding that fell off. Ezrin declares he's going for a walk, um, and after a little while, Corvus goes to find him, but he finds panther tracks. Horrified, he returns to Rayler, saying that a panther got him, which Rayler's like, oh no, that can't be, and then she starts laughing at Corvus, who fails to find what is funny. She says he caught that Ezrin caught a ride on the panther and not in the panther, confirming with Corvus that Ezrin can speak with animals. Meanwhile, Rayla tends to Callum, even though she is not happy with him for using dark magic, she comforts him when he calls out in his sleep. Meanwhile, uh, Callum is in a nightmare state. <clears throat> uh, first, he falls into a pile of many, many keys, and then he finds the key of Erebos. So that's that cube with the primal sources on it. He tosses it to which another figure in the dream catches it, and he realizes that it is his dark magic self. He says not to be frightened, but to accept his destiny. Right as he reaches out, King Harrow appears in chains on his throne, telling Callum he is free. He denies dark magic Callum, saying destiny is a book you write itself, and the dark Callum crumbles and disappears. Left with King Harrow, who then says, this is your dream, and he leaves. Uh, Callum then finds himself on a dock <coughs> and enters Baladi's boat, and that there's a terrible storm. From there, he becomes a sail, which is kind of very weird animation and art, but it's a thing. So he becomes like the wind and the sails. As he struggles in the sea, he is watching himself through a primal stone. So he's watching himself going through all of this, which then he breaks it, but then it reverses. And now he sees that Callum is shipwrecked and floating on a barrel, but then he loses his grip and falls into the sea. Meanwhile, Viren talks with the figure asking for his name and where are you at. I put his address. This is how you know you do so much paperwork. It's like name and address. Like, I guess it's the same thing, but he's like, you know, where, where are you at right now? And he's like, I don't know. He finally gives him his name, Erebos, and Viren removes the bug and leaves the room. Viren goes to the library to do some light reading about Erebos, but the letters start to disappear as he's reading the page. Angrily, he asks Erevos about the scrolls and books, and Erevos informs him he should not trust him yet. Alright. This one's a doozy. Let's get ready for it. Alright. <clears throat> Last episode of Season 2, Episode 9, Breathe. Uh, Claudia apologizes to Ezrin, and the banther leaves the village, so... Ezrin caught the ride on the banther, not in the banther, to go talk to Claudia. So they go and they talk on top of the ballista. Ezrin wants to talk about his dad, but Claudia says <coughs> uh, that he can wait to talk to her about it. Instead, she shares the story about her parents used to fight a lot and that her mother moved back to Delbar. When Soren chose to stay with Viren, her mother suggested Claudia also stayed. Losing her mother was the hardest thing. <laughs> and Ezrin says, you have to be ready to face things you're not ready for, and how Callum told him that. Ezrin starts to cry, and then Claudia comforts him. Claudia asks Ezrin for help when she realizes he can talk to animals. Claudia is able to find a mild fruit bush, and there is a family of deer nearby because they like to eat the, oh, milk fruit, not mild fruit, milk fruit. <laughs> uh, Claudia tells Ezrin to head back and that she apologizes again for everything that happened. Ezrin, of course, accepts her apology. Uh, Claudia approaches the deer and gains the trust of one, saying that she needs to, to use the deer for, for something. Uh, she then goes back to Soren, who's laying in the bed paralyzed, 
and through dark magic and, and the help of the baby deer, she is able to help Soren regain feeling in his uh, body again. Excuse me. <clears throat> but as she does so, a white streak appears in her hair. They leave the town and talk about what will Viren say. Soren says a short haiku, which Claudia is happy about because it was able to have enough rhymes and syllables and all that, which then knocks Soren to the ground because <laughs> she's so excited. <coughs> uh, Callum is still in his dream state, and Rayla is pleading for Callum to stay with her. But Callum is um, in the dream where he sees his mother, who is telling him to breathe. Callum is says he's overwhelmed, which his mother comforts him by saying he needs to stay in the present and to breathe and know something with his head, heart, head, heart, head, heart, hands, and mind, body, spirit, and that how she loves him no matter what. At this point, the key of Erebus starts to flicker, and right as Rayla seems to be confessing something, Callum wakes up and announces that he understands the Sky Arcanum. Callum says he is inside a primal stone in the earth that everything around him is like a primal source, and how he is inside it, and as he breathes, he can connect with the wind. Callum does a rune in the air, takes a deep breath, says Aspro, and is able to blow a large amount of wind into the trees. Just at that point, Ezrin and Corvus come back, and from there they come up with a plan for Rayla, and Callum brings them back to the Dragon Queen, and Ezrin, Bade, and Corvus will go back to Catalus. Viren wants to throw the mirror in a river, but what good would that do? But Erebus says that Viren is too curious. Viren vents about how the kings and queens would not listen to him, and Erebus says they will plan to help get their attention. Erebus says the best thing to do is to motivate them with fear. Viren takes four weapons and lights a candle, where the wielders of the weapons appear and go to the kingdoms. Erebus is able to assist Viren in a fight against guards using the staff. Opeli makes an entrance, and Erebus says to stop. Viren is led away. Alright, Rayla, Callum, and Zim make it to the Moonstone Path, which has a trick to it, where the moon lights up runes onto which ones to step on. Uh, they make a run for it, but are not quick enough as the sun begins to rise. Ezrin can now sense that Zim is in trouble, and can see through Zim's eyes, <coughs> and can tap it- can never say this word. <laughs> they can communicate with Zim within their minds and stuff. Ezrin climbs onto Corvus' shoulders, and Zim is able to fly. So this is where Zim finally finds his wings and flies. Uh, yet he has trouble, and Callum uses Aspero to create wind for Zim, which carries him to the other side to be able to block the light to let the moonlight onto the path so Irela and Callum can get to the other side safely. When they all get there, they all share a hug. <clears throat> and now that they are finally in Zadia, they think things are going well until they realize that the, the path is blocked by a large dragon, Sol Rigum. And that's where the series ends. Or not series, the season. My bad. <laughs> Ooh, you did it! Like, you, the whole thing! <laughs> mm -hmm. Alrighty. Oh, we did it! Alright, so real quick, uh, Miko-chan, any thoughts, theories about season 2? What you think? So... Doing this recap, I feel like the key of Erebos is going to come back and bite them in the butt later. Because mm -hmm. I always forget that it is called the key of Erebos, and then considering stuff in the later seasons, I think it's going to become a problem. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Um, like I mentioned earlier, um, Viren did take Shirai's uh, last breath. And it gets used as a component in season three. Hang on, I'm, re I'm re watching that tomorrow, so <laughs> I'll be on the lookout for it. And then I'll probably be texting you like, I figured it out. I can't remember what yeah. it was used for. To take yes. down something really, really big in revenge. Yeah. Especially yeah. if you remember season five, they tell you what needed to take out one. 
Yeah, I definitely feel like Baron was just like, go, 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 hurry, hurry, hurry. He's like, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, because as she was dying in his arms, he was like, mm -hmm. oh, bro, let's, let's take mm -hmm. this. This is a great ingredient, this final breath. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> just trying not to give a uh, spoiler for later, but okay. um, it does come back. Mm -hmm. It comes back pretty early on in season three. Um, and it's kind of done up considering. Sir, I never liked dark magic and was a very much against it. And to find out her last breath is going to be used in a component for dark magic. Mm -hmm. um, as already stated, the representation we love, we love our mm -hmm. lesbian queens. Yeah. It's so sad we didn't get it for long. I feel so bad for Anya though because mm -hmm. she she was like she's Ezra's age so about one years old she lost both her mothers and since then she had to grow up she mm -hmm. had to deal with constant assassination attempts people mm -hmm. trying to t control her and everything so she's used to being manipulated by adults and told that mm -hmm. oh why are you here you are Where's your region? Where's this? Mm -hmm. When he's had to make these decisions, what's best for her people in the end? Yeah. It's like, do not respect, disrespect our queen like that. Mm -hmm. And now Ezrin is going to have to follow similar, similar steps. It's like, can they still just get together and talk and be like, hey, mm -hmm. how do you handle this? I need tips. Mm -hmm. I want to see what she looks like all grown up now. I know, right? I want to, it's like, let us see her. Um, the, um, the Raylum ship started selling this season. Um, <laughs> the almost, almost confession, as she thought Callum was dying on her. Our girl. Yes. We know, we know someone was secretly jealous when um claudia and callum went off alone um mm -hmm. the the idea of that the the issue with um callum in the in between states is that constant fighting of good versus evil and humanity the mm -hmm. evil of dark magic trying to make this choice of what they're going to do and should they let that control them or not or what is their consciousness in this how do they feel it is basically that war raging on inside him and that is why he almost his mom even telling him having to tell him to just breathe because he was almost going to die from this um but it is a great representation that we won't see the last of, which is great to know. Lots of, lots of good stuff in there, lots of good references, and just overall, just a very, very good wholehearted show. It's got its like dark moments, but it's really well balanced, so definitely recommend checking it out. <laughs> yep. Disappointing it. So, uh, any other last minute thoughts, questions? It's, it covers complicated topics mm -hmm. for not things that is just, and it covers it in a really, really a delicate way that's easy for younger audiences to be able to understand process and stuff. You don't have to worry about it being too dark until season five. Yeah, by season five, I think they had to change the rating for or something on Netflix, and I was like, oh, okay. The, I know for sure they have, they put up actual warning now. There's mm -hmm. actual, a disclaimer, like a disclaimer, this is the thing, be prepared yeah. for the, like, they didn't mm -hmm. have to do that until season five. Yeah, so. <clears throat> but yeah, I would definitely say, like, seasons one and two, you kind of get more of the backstory, a little bit of the lore, getting to know the characters, and all that, so. It seems like what they're doing is the first two seasons of a set, it's 
backstory lore build up. And then the third season of the set is how it's all tying together and just everything, all the little storylines and wrapping up. And you see it again. Mm -hmm. um, four and five, same thing. Building up, building up, trying to build up all these little storylines, set the yep. groundwork, and then oh. I, we should see in season six the same wrap up. Yeah. But we're getting seven of them? I, I believe I've seen seven. Yeah. So, I'm curious. I want to see real quick in my notes. Yeah, I don't think there was any reflections or novels beforehand. Of course, not at the time of this recording. It's just everything that happened in season one, so. Yeah, I don't think they get, um, we don't get the reflections actually tying mm -hmm. in until season, after season three. Mm-hmm. Like in between. Because they did it as a, uh, this is the mm -hmm. in-between period because they went on a huge hiatus for three mm -hmm. years. Yeah. Three yeah. years was a hiatus. Yeah. So they to tie over during COVID because COVID was our big factor why this happened in the first place. Yep. Um, they gave us these um, tie-ins to try to appease the fans on the wait. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. It's not a good... year hiatus and mm -hmm. it is seven seasons in total we're getting. Yeah. So expect more of these all seven in total. I think uh if the boss lets me, we're doing another one. We're doing seasons three and four, then five and six together, and then just seven separately. So that's what I'm hoping that would for. Make sense. <laughs> that's what I'm hoping for. So, alrighty. And with that, I'm good to wrap up. Any last minute thoughts, questions? Um, other tie-in medias you can always play if you need a um, Dragon Fix kick. Uh, there is a board game, the Battle Charge. Which I have. Um, they also, if you are a D and D fan, they do have their own set of core book and module set that you can play. Um, tried that out. That is an interesting, fun um, concept, different than D and D, but mm -hmm. it is also fun. Um, there's the comics. There are three graphic novels so far, and they do have these. If you're someone who can't watch media too well. Mm -hmm. They do have it as books, so the first two are out, with the third one coming out soon, or each following each season. Um, and currently in the works is a um, video game yeah. that they're currently in the works of making. Um, can't mm -hmm. give too much information about that because I am testing. I'm one of the testers in it, but yeah. it is it is bound to be fun and interesting. Looking forward to it. So, yay! Lots of good stuff. Lots of good things in the fandom. So, alrighty. So, uh, I believe that's everything that we're going to cover for seasons one and two. So, just want to say thank you all for watching. Thanks for sticking it this far in this video. Uh, if you made it this far, comment, give me a jelly tart, and I will give you a jelly tart, tart in the comments. Uh, thank you, Miko-chan, for joining, for talking, discussing. It's been so much fun. You look amazing as as Rayla. So, yay! Good, good stuff. So, until then, we hope everyone's taking care, staying safe, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!